The subject of clean code is important for anyone who writes code, and games in particular seem ripe for getting messy fast. So today, let's talk about how to write code that is cleaner, more readable, and more maintainable. Tip 1. Write for the reader. First off, the core concept behind pretty much everything we'll discuss today is that you should write code for the human that will be reading your code in the future. Whether that's you an hour from now, a teammate a week from now, or again, and possibly most likely, yourself one year from now when you want to pull some useful code for another project. The vast majority of the time, the computer running your code will take care of itself. It's the pesky, ephemeral human mind that you need to worry about. So write for the person that will be reading your code one day, and all these other rules will seem pretty obvious. Tip number two, use meaningful, descriptive names. This is one of the most fundamental and important principles to hold on to, and with code completion built into any editor worth its salt, and therefore making it so you don't even have to type out the whole variable or function name after you first declare it, there's no excuse for using short or abbreviated names in a modern code base. Variables should clearly define what data they hold and any units associated with it, while function names should clearly state what they do. You should also generally avoid any abbreviations that aren't commonly understood and standardized. MPH for miles per hour, for instance, is okay, but any custom abbreviations or lingo should be avoided. This is important so the intent of your code is easily understandable to anyone new to it, and that even includes yourself if you work alone. Come back to your code in three months to a year and see how well you remember what it's doing. You'll be glad you made it clear why each variable and function exist. There is one exception to this rule, and that is for variables that are more or less globally and conventionally named as such. For instance, naming the current index of a for loop i, and then the index of a nested loop j. Tip number three, no magic numbers. This is related to the last point, so there's not as much to say about it, but don't use magic numbers in your code, i.e. those that are arbitrary and unnamed. Any sort of configuration or multiplier should be clearly named so that another developer, or future you, can make sense of why this number is used. Tip number four, prefer smaller functions. Rather than prescribe an ideal function length, I'm just gonna leave it at this. Prefer writing shorter functions and do so by delegating to more functions as needed. Doing so makes it easier to read and follow the logic of your code and can help ensure your code is more reusable. A big monolithic function of 100 lines is hard to make sense of and is almost certainly doing too much, whereas a nice short 5 or 10 line function calling other functions is easy to understand and ensures that you're making your code more reusable. Tip number five, forgo comments and write self-documenting code. Comments are a code smell, a piece of code that is indicative of a potentially larger issue in the code base, and therefore should be rarely used in a well-written code base. With poorly written code, they're used as a bandage over unclear code that really just needs to be refactored so its intent is clearer. In an otherwise good code base, they just take up space and make code comprehension harder by distracting the reader. Additionally, they tend to become quickly outdated as the code evolves, but they're forgotten about and left behind. That's not to say that all comments are bad, just that you should be judicious with where you use them. Working with an external library or API with some wonkiness to it, go ahead and put a comment clarifying your workaround. Tip number six, make use of white space. This applies to both the spaces within your lines of code, the code's indentation, and the line breaks themselves. Smartly placed white space makes your code more readable by grouping together related bits of code, separating unrelated bits of code, and making non-alphanumeric characters easier to read. It can also be used to show the relation between code over multiple lines, most commonly seen when, for instance, you indent all the parameters of a function when the call takes up more than one line. Like with most things, too much white space can be a bad thing, so work on finding that middle ground and you'll be good to go. Tip number seven, respect and use line limits. Line limits are a basic, easy way to keep your code readable. Too short of lines means you have to jump lines too often and therefore mentally readjust yourself by however small amount that is. Conversely, lines that are too long can increase mental effort by making you lose your spot compared to the rest of the code base. Plus, just like a run-on sentence, they can just feel long when reading them. Even when the code is well written, a 200 character line of code is a lot to take in. So how long should your lines be? Well, traditionally 80 characters was the upper limit. This is apparently based off of the numbers of holes in a punch card and matches the character limits of early computer screens. But nowadays, most people will bump it up anywhere from 100 to 150 characters per line. For most code, I personally stick to a limit of 140 characters, though I will go down to 100 sometimes when using Godot's built-in code editor, since the window's smaller in that engine than in something like VS Code, and word wrapping code is just gross. Tip number eight, use enumerators. Aversion to enumerators is something I see from time to time, especially in the game dev world for some reason, so let me just say that you should use enumerators when you have a fixed number of options to choose from in your code. They aren't prone to typos, differences in capitalization, or encoding errors like strings are, and they're much easier to remember and more flexible than numbers. 
Enumerators make it so that you know what you're selecting when you write your code, you know your selection won't be misinterpreted, and if you want to make changes to the available options or order of options later, it does not impact the code you've already written. Enumerators, use them, love them. Tip number nine, keep it dry. Dry or don't repeat yourself is a very important concept to remember when writing code. If you find yourself doing the same thing more than once or maybe twice, turn that code into a function so that it can be used as many places as possible, even if it's just a single line of code. This reduces code base size, lets you more quickly understand the code since you can just see a well-named function call and reason about what it does, or even just give it a glance once and then understand every call after. And it makes it easier to maintain your code since you only have to edit your code in one location and have the changes reflected everywhere. Tip number 10. Functions should do one thing. This is really just a sliver of a larger concept regarding code structure and architecture that I'm not going to talk about today, but I want to go ahead and mention it here since it's an easy trap that even experienced programmers fall into. If you feel the need to use the word AND to describe what a function does properly, or if you can't reuse a function because it has other side effects than what's on the label, you're probably trying to do too much with it. Ideally, a function should do one thing and one thing only. If it's doing more than one thing, you probably need to break out its functionality into more functions, making it more reusable, and then wrap those calls together in another function call that properly establishes the intent. Tip number 11, use your language's features and conventions. For the last tip, let's go really broad. Don't reinvent the wheel or fall prey to not invented here syndrome. If your language provides a built-in way to do something or has a conventional way of doing something, go with it. You don't want to waste your time and mental effort creating problems for existing solutions. For example, GDScript has all sorts of functions built in to help you speed up your development process. And since these come standard in Godot, their functionality is widely tested and used across a huge number of projects and developers. Additionally, pretty much every class and data type in the engine has built in functions to save you time and effort. Use these functions and save your efforts for more unique problems than normalizing a vector or rounding a number. And that's it, we're finally at the end. Hopefully these tips will help you write cleaner, more maintainable, and more readable code. I have intentionally excluded architectural tips and discussions since that's really a discussion worth having entirely on its own. So stay tuned for more info on that in the future, and do share your own tips for writing cleaner code in the comments.